again. So I am Steve Elmer. I'm with Metropolitan Council. I am uh, a freight planner and multimodal planner that works in our long range planning uh, part section of uh, the Met Council. And thank you for inviting us to be a part of this presentation today. I'm happy to talk and give you an overview of our regional highway truck corridors study that's been ongoing for about a year now and we are nearing the end of it. Um, no, that's not gonna work. There you go, let me just click the system. There we go. Uh, so I just want to start with some background here. Um, kind of why now, why are we doing the study? And it goes back to our transportation policy plan, which is a big part of what we do in long range planning. Uh, it is our long range plan for the seven county metropolitan region. And we have several goals and objectives that are in the existing transportation policy plan that uh, support, uh, have comments about freight and its support of economic competitiveness, um, vitality, prosperity, uh, and objectives as well. And in the last TPP, which was adopted in 2014, we had a work program item specified in there to, uh, for the need to identify freight needs on our systems, highways, and roads. So this study is the effort to satisfy that task, that requirement. Uh, in addition to that, and maybe more importantly, the FAST Act, which many of you are familiar with, passed uh, as a federal law late in 2015. It provided a uh, freight investment program uh, for, uh, for highways, the, for freight improvements, about $6.5 billion overall over five years. Needs to be programmed and awarded to freight projects. And part of that is Fast Lane, which is a competitive program 4.5 billion dollars <throat> that uh, we can com compete for uh, for freight projects. So there's a need in the region to uh, identify uh, freight needs and potentially freight projects uh, that would be eligible and competitive for these federal funds. So that's the other reason we're uh, doing it now and that this is a, an important study. <clears throat> these are the key questions that guided the study. They align very closely with um, the study tasks. Uh, we're trying to define, we have defined now, uh, some key regional truck corridors based on a set of criteria uh, that were developed and um, vetted through a, an ongoing technical advisory group. I'm going to talk much more about these. We are taking a specific look at how freight is most affected by congestion on these key freight corridors and we've done a high level uh, assessment of major safety issues and physical constraints along these key corridors. And the last task, the last question there hasn't been answered yet, but it is uh, one of the last tasks that we will be, the consultant team's working on. Uh, how might the results be used? The results of this study will be used to inform our transportation policy plan update. And we are just starting the next TPP, the new TPP, uh, we're required by federal law to update this plan every four years as the Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, for the Twin Cities region. Uh, there may be some action strategies or investment guidelines that are added to the plan to take into account these new key freight corridors and uh, perhaps a performance measure uh, that ties directly to the truck corridors uh, that will help us monitor progress on the goals and objectives in the transportation policy plan. In addition to that, at a more federal level, uh, as part of the FAST Act, we're required to define or designate rather critical urban and critical rural freight corridors. This needs to be done statewide. That MnDOT is working on that, and um, within our region as well. And we're doing that in close collaboration with MnDOT uh, over the course of this year. Uh, and that uh, also uh, relates to eligibility for these fast act funds. In addition to that, uh, our regional solicitation process, which is the process of allocating federal transportation <coughs> dollars to the region through the Met Council and our Transportation Advisory Board. It's a biennial process, happens every two years, and before each cycle, we review uh, the prioritization criteria 
uh, uh, by mode, and so it is likely that we would take these study results and look at the freight uh, criteria that are used in that process as well. Uh, over the course of the study, we had a technical advisory group that we convened. Each of the seven counties uh, had a representative there, as well as the core cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. The cities of Blaine and Savage were there uh, as suburban interest cities. Uh, and then uh, MnDOT was heavily involved in the St. Paul Port Authority and a few public sector practitioners, freight practitioners as well. This was our ongoing advisory group throughout the study. One of the first tasks that we engaged in um, during the study was stakeholder interviews. And I wanted to touch on this uh, directly as it was it directly relates to uh, Donna Korn's work that she is uh, planning for the metro area in terms of outreach interviewing uh, for MnDOT. We used an open-ended question format, nothing too formal, um, sat down and had informal conversations with operators, owner-operators of freight terminals or of shippers, uh, transportation logistics uh, personnel. We asked about shipping behaviors. What commodities do you ship? What are the frequencies of distribution, um, ingoing and outgoing? What are your typical truck volumes uh, that come in and out of your facility on a daily basis and maybe a seasonal basis as well? And then what are your typical destinations for your freight, uh, both within the region and uh, outside the region and connecting to other parts of the nation? We ask them about, uh, you know, what are your most heavily relied upon corridors? What are the most important highways that you use? And what is the route they take? What are the local routes? And what are those first and last mile connections that are so important to your specific facility? Then we asked about availability of alternative routes. If there is a major construction on a highway, like say, you, uh, Trunk Highway 100, do you have alternative routes uh, to directly access your facility. Um, as well, we asked about any known specific congestion locations on these routes and any known safety or physical constraints or other infrastructure issues that they wanted to make us aware of. <clears throat> this is a partial list of the stakeholder companies that we did interview uh, in each of these industry sectors. Uh, there were a total of about 16 or 17 interviews, I believe. There were several who did not wish to be identified, were not included here, but still provided us with good information. As a result, one of the outcomes of the study was producing a regional issues map. So this was kind of a high level uh, highway system issues map. These are maybe the top 12 or 13 issues. Uh, that were mentioned, and we use this later to help us determine what specific corridors we want to go out and investigate on site and in the field. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, in terms of their key concerns about the truck corridors, interstate connectivity, which seems obvious, but it's always good to verify, uh, are essential to everybody, basically, both within the region and also connecting to other parts of Minnesota and the Midwest and the nation at large. Specifically, a lot of mention about first and last mile connections, but also to the region's, uh, specifically access to the region's freight facilities shown here, the ports of St. Paul and Savage on the rivers, and the rail intermodal facilities in St. Paul and Minneapolis, as well as Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport, which is a, a critical component for uh, the medical industry in shipping high value, time sensitive, uh, lightweight freight packages. Uh, additional comments were made about state, county, and local routes um, that do connect to the large freight generators. <clears throat> so shifting gears a little bit here, we're going to get into the analysis that we did undertake. This is sort of the universe of the highway, the regional highway system. That was our starting point. <clears throat> it includes all the interstates, non-interstate freeways, other principal arterials that are not freeways, uh, that would be four lane divided, typically higher speed, high volume roads that are continuous. Those are all shown in red. Um, and then the blue are the minor arterials uh, that we have. 
designated at the regional level. These are primarily county roadways, county highways, uh, include some MnDOT trunk highways as well, and maybe a few, local, a few local roadways in addition to that. But this is kind of the universe that we looked at, and then we need to, needed to winnow down that through a process. So we established four criteria uh, with the use of the technical advisory group. Uh, we had two truck usage criteria and two more land use related criteria. The top two are the truck criteria. We looked at average daily truck volumes um, on these corridors and then the truck percentage uh, of total traffic on these corridors as well. You can see the criterion weights that were used there and so it was heavily weighted toward these truck uh, usage criteria. Um, and in addition, there were land use related criteria. We did a freight clusters analysis I will speak about in a moment. In addition to acknowledging the regional freight facilities that are already identified in our transportation policy plan and gave them uh, <clears throat> some a small as a small factor uh, in the analysis as well. And before I forget, I should mention a couple things about the study, about what it is and what it is not. Um, and I meant to mention this at the start, but let's just mention it now. So it is not. Um, it was often misconstrued as development of a freight network, and it is not that. We did not mean for this to become an official freight network. What the study was set to do was to establish what are the high-use corridors based on existing data. How are they used today by trucks, and which ones are the most important as a result of that, plus the factors of land use in terms of a little bit of connectivity and proximity to those freight clusters uh, that is important as well. But it's really a set of corridors. They don't all necessarily mesh and make that perfect network um, that we might think of when we think about a network. So I just sort of wanted to throw out that caveat. <clears throat> uh, okay, so moving ahead then, the first thing we did was to take the truck cord, the truck usage data and apply that in a two-tiered screening process. Um, we set a threshold of looking for highway segments that had at least 300 uh, average daily traffic for trucks. Uh, so those that met that were in for further analysis. And then we went beyond that because that really focused in on the core of the region, which has the highest density of truck travel, truck uh, volumes. So to get further out and include uh, other parts of the region that are also important for freight, we went down to 200 trucks per day. If they also had at least 10% um, truck traffic to total traffic. That was the second. So this is the result of those two screens. Uh, so we went down from that first universe of all the regional highways down to this set. And we, you can see there's a mix there of interstates uh, other non-NHS, which are some non-freeway principal arterials and minor arterials in blue. So as far as the land use data then, we did look at, um, the consultant team looked at identifying the foremost predominant freight related economic sectors. And these are consumer goods, transportation and logistics, manufacturing, and natural resources. So they did a these are heat maps uh, in each of those economic sectors, and it shows how they are distributed in the region. It is based on sales data uh, from Info USA business data. Uh, so it does have that uh, aspect to it, but it does show um, based on uh, sales what what it looks like in each of those each of those clusters. The Info USA data did give us the advantage of getting down to the street address level by, for location. So the locations were very specific compared to other data sets that only go down to maybe the county level or maybe the TAZ transportation analysis zone level. So then this is a compilation of those four, those four maps I just showed you, the four economic sectors, and this is what um, it, it looked like. Uh, and this was the basis for that um, freight industry cluster criterion in the evaluation. And then in addition to that, 
we have these uh, regional freight terminals that are shown on a map in our transportation policy plan. Uh, they got a little extra bump in terms of scoring if uh, the facility was near or access to these facilities. This includes primarily the river ports, the Minneapolis airport, uh, and the, uh, the rail intermodal hubs. Five minutes um, presentation. Five minutes. Thank you. Uh, in the summer, we had um, we had an extensive review process that we went through, and we met with each county's uh, engineering and planning staffs to address their specific questions and data questions, and also to take advantage of their local knowledge of how their highway systems were used in those counties, what the freight facilities were um, in those areas, and we gave them the opportunity to give us data. Uh, that they might have had local truck counts done on a highway project or something, we were able to incorporate that data into our analysis. Um, we got feedback from all counties resulting in revisions to these key corridors and to the methodology to a certain extent uh, in every county. So this is what we ended up with for our uh, regional truck corridors. This is where we are today. It's uh, prioritized by tiers. Tier 1 is red, Tier 2 is yellow, and Tier 3 is green. And you can see the red Tier 1 closely uh, follows or coordinates with the, uh, the interstate system and freeway system, as it probably should. Uh, and then just as a summary table, we have over 1,200 miles of designated key truck corridors. And percentage-wise, it breaks down between, if you just look at principal arterials and A minor arterials, I believe it was 43% principal arterials and 57% minor arterials. So there is a heavy emphasis on those smaller roads that do tend to provide closer to those last mile connections to freight facilities and our county highways, which were very important, of course, for the county folks that contributed to this study. Um, and I'm going to keep moving here. So then we looked at congestion bottlenecks based on the data that we had. These are what were identified. Uh, these were used to help us identify um, 10 corridors that we looked at in the field for additional on-site uh, observation and analysis. We also looked at crash hotspots in the region, and this is what came out of that. And so combining those two, we ended up with these uh, 10 corridors that uh, we did more detailed on-site observation and analysis, uh, kind of a high level, and it took sort of a case study approach to these. And uh, this analysis uh, is uh, in draft memo form at the moment, but will be uh, available soon. Two minutes. Two minutes. I'm finishing up here. These were the issues that were re uh, used to review these corridors. Um, some were more important in uh, some corridors than others. And um, in addition, then, we had an ITS specialist on the team who looked at, you know, uh, higher technology types of solutions, particularly as they relate to freight terminals, looking at queuing systems or real-time gate status reporting. Signal coordination was a big one that came up in some corridors as a potential advantage that has an advantage not only for moving trucks, but uh, fewer emissions from trucks as an environmental benefit less consumption of, of fuel and the, uh, or the corresponding savings in cost are, are potential benefits of signal coordination. Vertical height detection systems are something that could be used uh, to uh, warn trucks of an oncoming low clearance bridge so they don't run through it. And uh, so I'm not sure if we identified an actual location for that or not, but that was one idea. Dynamic message signing, uh, similar to what's already available on MnDOT's system, but maybe with a twist to it to be more uh, appropriate for uh, trucks or more directed to trucks. Physical improvements to correct for these types of <coughs> deficiencies were also recommended. Our next steps, last slide, uh, findings, conclusions, and recommendations memo is uh, forthcoming. I think it's due today, so it's probably in my inbox. I will be reviewing that. A draft study report then would be coming out in the next several weeks. 
we're going to schedule our final tag meeting uh, for early March and then wrap up the study with the final report at the end of March. So that is what I have. Time hey, for questions. I can take good. a few. But yeah. Do folks have questions? Yes. Go in the back. We've got folks in the front too. Go ahead. Steve, um, for the two tables that you have at the back of the handout, the top congestion bottlenecks, top crash hotspots, I assume those are top freight congestion bottlenecks, top freight crash locations? Correct. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? Yes. I have to make a hand up, but just truck. You say uh, freight on a truck crash, right? Yes. Okay. And then the next question is, what's the next step for this study? Well, the next step would be to um, complete the study, and then we will be incorporating these corridors in some fashion into the transportation policy plan. So that update started in January and runs through this year. We'll be releasing a draft for public review in about a year, January of next year. And then that'll be adopted the following summer, summer of 2018. Any additional questions for Steve? Yes, go here. Do you find any huge concern, immediate concern, or problems that are coming out from the people you're talking to that said, hey, we've got to address this now? Nothing that elevated above everything else is a red flag, I would say. Yeah. But a range of issues we have in this region. Um, a very spread out freight facilities um, distribution, I think, compared to other cities. So the problems are kind of spread out. Any additional questions? Any questions from anybody on the phone? I'm not seeing any questions come up here. Going once, <laughs> going twice. You're off the hook. Thank you very much. Thank you.